Okay, we are going to talk about the domain and the range. Now, domain, it's just our first coordinate in ordered pair. We usually think of it as our x's. Our x's run from the left to the right. I have x's way down here, even at negative 100. This goes, goes on and on and on to negative infinity. Up here, I could go to 50, I could go to 100, I could go to 200. This goes on and on and on to positive infinity. Our x's, we look at the x's, part of the graph that's down here. These are the negative x's, these are the positive x's. We also have our y's, our y's go up and down. This is y at 1, this is y at 2. Anything across here, the y's are 2. Y's at 3, Y's at 4 in this area. They go up, 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 all the way to positive infinity. Of course, down here, negative infinity. When you talk about the domain and range, it's usually an interval of numbers. So you do need to make sure you put them in order, from the smallest to the largest. Let's get to work. This is a line. F of X equals 3X plus 2. You should remember how to graph this. This is in the form y is equal to mx plus b. Very quickly, the y-intercept, it crosses the y-axis at 2. And the slope is 3, also known as 3 over 1. So I will rise 3. I will run 1. This is a line. And so from the graph, I could see that the domain, which x's are included in this graph? The domain will be negative infinity to positive infinity. Because no matter where I look on my x's, here are my x's way down here at negative infinity. The graph, it's way down here. As my x's go, go, go to positive infinity, my graph happens to be way up there, but I do have x's part of that picture. What about the range? The y's start low and they end high. Here are the y's way down here at negative infinity. These are the negative infinities. Yes, my graph is touching down there. And the y's, they go up, 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 all the way to positive, positive infinity. Let's try to determine the domain and the range of this picture. I don't have an equation, but I do have a picture of a graph. This actually is not a function. But what is the domain of this circle? Do I have any x's graphed down here? No, no x's, no x's, no x's, no x's. At negative 1, it looks like the graph, the picture begins. And they go, and they go, and they go. And it looks like they stop at approximately 5. So my domain of that picture of that circle is negative 1 and the x's go and go and go until 5. Now I did use the brackets. Why did I use the brackets? Because negative 1 is part of that circle. 5 is part of that circle. These brackets say, hey, that is included. Now let's talk about the range. Okay, so remember the range is my y's. They start down here, they go up, 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 up. Well, I don't have any part of my graph down here. But when my y's get to negative 3, that is where my range begins. And it does include negative 3. And I'm still touching the graph. I'm still touching the graph. It goes all the way up to positive 3. That's the domain and the range of that circle. Now, I want us to do this algebraically. I have the function f of x equals 3 over x minus 2. Most of the time, you know, we may think, well, x can be anything, negative infinity to positive infinity. But when you see a variable in the denominator or underneath the radical, that should definitely ring a bell. You should think, I better be careful here. The denominator cannot equal 0. So whatever is underneath there, in this case x minus 2, it cannot equal 0, which means x itself cannot equal positive 2. It can equal everything, 
everything except for positive 2. I can write this in interval notation. These are all the numbers from negative infinity up, up, up until 2. But then I have more answers. These are also the numbers from 2 to infinity. But I do have parentheses around these 2's because it does not include 2. It can equal 1.999999. Then right after 2, it could be 2.00001. But it cannot be 2 because if it was 2, that would make my denominator equal to 0. So this is the algebra part of it. Let's look at the graph. I could go to my y equal button and I would type in 3 divided by and we had x minus 2. Make sure you put that in parentheses. So this is a graph of 3 over x minus 2. And my graph goes and goes and goes and it goes down. It curves down. And here it's curving up. It's never touching 2. It's never, my x's will never be 2. Because what happens if they are 2? My denominator will equal 0. I can't have that. Okay, I know this is not too pretty, but but the graph f of x equals 1 over x. It's basically like that. I do have a vertical asymptote, you know, because x cannot equal 0 here. Okay, so this function will make it shift to the right two places. So if I took my graph, shifted it to the right two places, now you can see my vertical asymptote is at 2. So once again, we now ask you what the domain is. All of my x's from negative infinity, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes, and whoop, stop, take a break at 2. But then it starts again and goes from 2, or right after 2, to infinity. And we got the same answer that we did when we did it algebraically. Let's try another one. What is the domain of this function? f of x equals the square root of x minus 4. Well, whatever is underneath this radical, it has to be greater than or equal to 0. It can be 0, it just can't be a negative. Which means x has to be greater than or equal to 4. So it could be any number greater than or equal to 4. How do I write this domain? It will start at 4. It does include 4, which is why I did the bracket, and it goes to infinity. The domain is 4 to infinity. Let's get a visual on that. Okay, so this is the graph of the square root of x. But the square root of x minus 4, that is going to shift my graph to the right four units. And if I want to look at this and see the domain, I will use this line to help me. Is my graph over here to the left? No, 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 no. But when it gets to four, that's where my graph starts. And it includes four. And then my x's, they're all part of my graph then. So four to infinity, that is my domain. The same thing I got when I did it algebraically. What about the range? Could you tell me the range by looking at this picture? Well, remember the range, that's the y, so they start down here and they go up. I'm not touching the graph. I'm not touching the graph. At zero, I start touching the graph to infinity. So the range, looking at this picture, starts at zero and it also goes to infinity.